My name is Lee Quinones. I am an artist that uh, works and lives here in New York City. I'm here on commission to create a mural for the hotel which is being constructed as we speak on the Lower East Side, my old neighborhood. The masterpiece, as I call it, so I'm very proud of it, uh, is going to be installed on the ceiling of the 12th floor Sky Lobby. This piece is a number of panels that are going to be serving as the background with the visuals of the Lower East Side from a bird's eye view. The actual mural itself is going to measure 40 feet by 16 feet. It's a good portion of that corner of the building where it overlooks almost a 360 degree view of the lower, lower east side. You know, in my sector of the lower east side as we passionately call the lower deck. And then within that climate that I'm creating, which is a very soft, very colorful visual climate of the lower east side, I have these replicas of Polaroid indicating certain events that happen, certain important iconic figures, both in the art, fashion, music world, particularly the arts, because the Lower East Side was pretty well known for it being an incubator for many young talents coming in to the city. The Polaroids consist of, you know, starting off with Mr. Purple and his Garden of Eden. His Garden of Eden being sort of an environmental activist piece that he utilized four to five plots of land that were raised by the city and just left for dead. And he took it on his own to create a community garden. So it's more about the plot of land being utilized for something very creative and beautiful uh, than the man himself. Fun gallery, I mean, what fun that was to be part of that institution. And Patty Astor is represented there. She's the founding member of the Fun Gallery, and I wanted to give her a visual presence in this project because she was the first of many galleries that opened up in the Lower East Side as alternative uh, venues to showcase your work. That particular piece, named after two amazing DJs in my neighborhood, Ice and Spanky, was my remembrance and my homage to the humble beginnings of hip hop. When these DJs came with the equipment that they either borrowed or bought with pennies to create these festive environments in the streets, and those parties were iconic. The Howard the Duck handball wall, that was the very first Campbell Wall painted in its entirety of its kind at that time, 1978. I created that mural out of the exhaustion that I already had on the subways, and that was my way to uh, show my work for the first time to a standing audience, and it was a complete success. That piece right there encompasses the many, many alternative venues again like CBGB's and Max's Kansas City, and then later on in the 80s, Mud Club, and a number of like offshoot, off-campus uh, venues where bands literally got their start. Crossing Delancey is a portrait of a very early Jean-Michel in his early days when he was experimenting with music with, along with Michael Holman and Nick Taylor and all those cats creating the band Grey and also creating art on the streets. So I wanted to bring to light the magic of the fusion of many arts, music, poetry, and the visual arts coming together under the, the incubator of the Lower East Side. It was such a special time and place. The Poets Cafe down in the Lower East Side is a way of me introducing again and again one of the uh, long-standing sanctuaries for the written word. People both perform there, they've read there lots of readings and lots of live performances, uh, both music and plays. So this painting of the gentleman sitting on the stairwell to heaven, as I call it, is a loose portrait of Miguel Pinheiro writing his uh, poetry on the steps of his life. It's uh, my celebration of not only Miguel, but many of his peers that have come through the doors of the Lower East Side. That piece probably vibrates more today than ever before because it's a striking contrast to how children find their ways on the street. You hardly see any kids playing and using alternative methods on the streets anymore. 
Everybody's behind the screen now. Back then, as I grew up, I was very, very physically active and very creative with found objects on the streets. So I wanted to embrace that with, with fond memories of my own upbringing on the streets. This is a, a photograph that Martha Cooper uh, took back in the early 80s. And this was uh, this gentleman, Edwin, had shown her around the neighborhood and actually gave her the first look into graffiti, the graffiti culture that was percolating underneath the ground. And he was a resident of the Lower East Side and uh, he also was into pigeons. So uh, this was an, you know, an iconic photograph, I believe. So I wanted to recreate it in this particular Polaroid fashion uh, painting. What I felt that was very unique about this project and working with BCRE and working you know, with IHG on this is that they were able to have enough confidence to give me confidence as well in telling the story about everybody else's story through my eyes as I saw it and heard it and witnessed it. And I think that it was very heroic of the firm to take that leap of faith along with me and give me the green light creatively to create something that is so beautiful. It was a very sensitive issue with all of us because of course it's a hotel environment. It's a, you know, it's a service, a venue where you want to go there to feel comfort and you want to feel a sense of enlightening and some an information exchange. And I think that it was very, it was a very unique gauntlet that we all navigated to get to this point where we're at, where it's a beautiful mural that's going to be represented throughout the hotel and pretty much give people the shout outs that they deserve.